Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am, as always, happy to be with you for another discussion about books, another discussion with an author. Today's author is a returning author. Joseph Reed was first on the podcast in July of 2019. If you uh, would like to go back and check out that first interview with him that was episode 170 it was again uh july 23rd 2019 so you you know you may want to take a take a quick break if you haven't listened to that one and go back and get an get an introduction to joseph and the seth walker series although we do talk about those series as a whole in this interview which kind of in a roundabout way, I just told you everything you need to know, sort of. <laughs> the author I'm speaking with today is Joseph Reed. The The book, I didn't say that yet, the name of the book is Departure. It is the third book in his Seth Walker series. So like I said, he, he came on to talk about book two in that earlier episode, and we talk about book one and two, and then we give a little overview of the series in this interview as well, but mainly concentrate on book three, which is called Departure. Let me go ahead and give you the description of that book. When an electrical engineer from one of America's premier tech companies disappears inside the San Francisco International Airport before an overseas flight, Air Marshal Seth Walker is called in to investigate. With the clock ticking down and questions multiplying at every turn, Walker can't afford to fail. The lives of all 200,000 passengers inside SFO may hang in the balance. As he races through crowded concourses, desperately searching for clues, Walker can sense this is no routine missing persons case. But as he digs ever deeper into the young man's background, the tangle of contradictions he finds is confounding. Is the engineer the victim of a crime? or the perpetrator of one. As the case forces Walker to confront his own demons and the reason he fled his former life in industry, finding this man may mean exposing his own darkest secret. So again, that is the description of Departure by Joseph Reed. It is Seth Walker book three, and as it said, Seth Walker is an air marshal. He does investigating uh, in various capacities. What I like about the series is that each book is a different type of investigation. Now, obviously, in this one, we have Seth investigating inside SFO. It's this very enclosed investigation scene, I guess you could say. Uh, I've only been to SFO a handful of times, but I, I'm just picturing many of the other airports I've been in and, and, and just having that space to investigate. Obviously, airports are big when you're trying to get from one concourse to the other and you're 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 late for your uh your next flight, but it's a it's a closed system and there's not that much room cuz compared to like say all of a large city that you're investigating in, but there's also all sorts of places that we as just everyday travelers can't go. So I find this really intriguing to be investigating inside an airport. So I like that Joseph always takes a slightly different approach to his mysteries and to Seth's investigation. I also like that in this book, we get more of Seth's past. It's been alluded to in the first two books. We we know something happened. We aren't fully sure what that was and so I always like when when the author doesn't make you just keep waiting and waiting and waiting and drawing that out we get we get more information on Seth's past in this book and so thanks Joseph for not just keeping me in suspense for a decade or something when it comes to at least giving me 
a bit more of a glimpse into Seth's past. So let's go ahead and turn now to the interview with Joseph Reed. Again, the book is Departure. Hey, Joseph, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me back again. I am happy to have you back, and we are going to talk about your third book in the Seth Walker series. But before we get to that book, um, for people who maybe didn't tune in for the first one or need a refresher, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Sure. So uh, I am currently both an author and a lawyer, uh, but originally I was going to be a research scientist. I studied to be a marine biologist, and I, I chased great white sharks around for a while. Uh, then I went to law school, and I've been writing the Seth Walker Thriller series for the last uh, three years. This is book three, and uh, so very excited to see where it goes and, and uh, excited to see how people are reacting to the books. And just in that that brief that brief introduction, it made, it made me smile because I um, went on your website last night just to double check, you know, the names of the, of the other two books and, and those sorts of things. And <laughs> when it when it pops up to join your newsletter, it says, you know, I won't just talk about books. I'll, I'll talk about sharks <laughs> and books or something like that. <laughs> so you're yeah, you're, you know, you're still exploring all of your passions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, the the shark thing is one of those things that just always comes up and and it's been it's been a lifelong fascination for me, but but it's also something I've found that people like hearing about and like talking about. So so yeah, anyone who goes to my website, they can sign up for my monthly newsletter. I, I do talk about the books, you know, I give some behind the scenes stuff and and let you see the photo reference I use for certain scenes and things like that, but but at the end of every uh, newsletter, I always have a section called Shark Attack, which is a, a little brief section about some either little known shark species or some new research into sharks that I found particularly interesting or something like that that, that you might not have come across, but you might you know, hopefully be interested in if, if they either scare you or fascinate you or both. Are you a fan of all sharks, or is there a particular shark um, that you are more interested in? Oh, I love them all, um, and, and I love different species kind of for different reasons. You know, um, tiger sharks scare me the most, frankly. Um, I did my uh, graduate research on leopard sharks, which um, I know in California are, are sort of everywhere. And, and people are sort of familiar with them from either you know, snorkeling or kayaking and things like that. So um, I think they're gorgeous and, and they've got a lot of interesting uh, attributes. Um, so, yeah, I could go on and on about, about sharks all day. We, we could do a whole podcast on sharks. We could. Like. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then people would be really confused as to why they tuned into a book podcast and got a shark <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, hey, life is full of surprises. <laughs> But we should talk about the book since that's why you're here. Um, but before we get, the, this is the third book, uh, as we said. So can you just give an overview of the the Seth Walker series and those first two books? Of course. Uh, so Seth's first adventure uh, came out in 2018. It was called Takeoff. And Seth is uh, an air marshal and an investigator for the Federal Air Marshal Service. So Takeoff is uh, the story of him being assigned to his first case. Uh, he's designated to bodyguard or protect uh, a teen singer. You could think of like a, a Miley Cyrus or a young Taylor Swift or something like that uh, on a cross-country flight from JFK to LAX. And when they get to baggage claim at LAX and he's about to hand her off to the FBI, uh, they're ambushed by a mysterious gang of gunmen who shoot up baggage claim and almost kill them. Uh, and Seth has to take uh, the pop singer on the run, uh, both to avoid the, the hail of bullets and then also to try and keep her safe and figure out who's trying to kill her. Uh, so that was his first adventure. Uh, then he came back in 2019 for a book called False Horizon. Uh, that book involves a, uh, the plane crash, the mysterious plane crash of a small commuter plane over rural West Virginia. And so Seth gets called from his home in, in LA all the way out to the woods and hills of West Virginia. And he's got to hunt around and see what might have downed this plane. And there's no shortage of suspects. Uh, there's uh, 
opioid dealers, um, there's uh, eco-terrorists, there's angry coal miners, there's frackers um, who are angry at the coal miners. So there, there's no shortage of suspects of who might have wanted to down this plane, but, but you've got to solve that mystery and, and prevent any other bad things from happening. And that brings us to Departure, which is the third book. And, and that just came out uh, toward the end of 2020. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Yes, that is what we are here to talk about today, but not until we take our first break. So after the break, Seth will be, Seth, ha, Joseph will be giving an overview of Departure. Uh, maybe it's Joseph channeling Seth. I don't know how these things work, but the, that's what we'll be discussing when we come back. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Joseph Reed about his new book, Departure. It is the third book in the Seth Walker series, Before the Break. Joseph was giving an overview of that series, of the first two books in the series, and then he had concluded with uh, Departure is the book that we are here to talk about today. So we'll pick up with uh, where we left off with that comment. Yes, we are. And, uh, you know, Seth has had his first couple of adventures. And um, when I talk to authors, they often say how mean or terrible they are to their main characters. So uh, I'll, I'll ask you, what does poor Seth have to go through this time? Yeah. So one of the things I like most about my series is that uh, from book to book, the kinds of adventures Seth gets into change. There, there's so many, there's so many dramatic things and and uh, interesting things to happen around airplanes and airports uh, that he can be put in a lot of different settings. And so, uh, where takeoff was a bodyguard story and false horizon was a crash investigation, this one is really a missing persons case. And so, uh, a VIP has checked in at San Francisco's SFO airport for an early morning international flight. And in between checking in and clearing security and then the plane boarding, uh, he's mysteriously disappeared. And so Seth and a whole bunch of other law enforcement get called in to try and figure out what might have happened to this VIP, uh, how you could possibly go missing inside uh, a modern airport, which is you know, probably has more uh, video cameras than any other building besides the uh, Las Vegas casino. Uh, and, and what other mysterious things might be afoot in the inside the airport um, that this disappearance might be related to. Yeah. And it, so it, it's interesting because as you said, video cameras everywhere, plus a lot of security in terms of actually being in the gate area after check-in, you know, if, all, all of those things come into play, but what is different than about investigating in an airport as opposed to some other crime scene? Yeah, a lot of things, really. I mean, the, the challenges Seth has in, in this book, I mean, number one, um, because this, this VIP has been missing for a little bit by the time he gets to SFO, uh, you know, the clock is ticking. And, and they're very worried about what might have happened and what, what might still be left to happen. And so he's left, you know, literally sort of running from place to place trying to, trying to find this missing person. Um, in addition, he's, he's, inside, uh, he's inside a closed space, uh, but he's in there with, you know, probably 100,000 people. Um, so this is not, uh, unlike, unlike in False Horizon where he's out in the wilderness, uh, taking on bad guys. Here, there's a whole bunch of innocent civilians he's got to worry about. 
Uh, so this isn't a place that's ideal for any kind of shootout or, or big confrontation. Uh, they also don't want any kind of panic on their hands. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of challenges working within the framework of the airport um, inside security, even though it's a locked space, um, trying, to, trying to figure out what might have happened. And what was your initial inspiration for this particular story? Uh, it, it was really, it was really sort of the conundrum of how could you go missing in an airport. Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in airports and on airplanes. That, that's one of the reasons I sent my books there. Uh, I, I do a ton of flying for my day job. At least I did before COVID nineteen. And so, one of the things you're always struck by, you know, like you were saying, is you're struck by this this intense security presence where. And you pass through these screening gates and, and there's all these uh, TSA personnel, you know, who frisk you down and make sure you don't have weapons or anything like that. And then once you're inside the terminal, you know, you're basically being watched and monitored the whole time you're there. Every door has an alarm on it. Uh, there's a, a billion video cameras watching your every move. So how could somebody possibly disappear in, in a situation like that? And what would you do to find them? That, that was kind of the, the operative question when I came up with the plot. You you do spend a lot of time in airports. I know this because I follow you on Instagram, <laughs> and you, you <laughs> mentioned in your in your newsletter you often have have pictures. But your Instagram is a lot of really interesting like shots in airports that you find. And I know this is slightly off topic from the book, but can you talk about why why you started taking those pictures? Oh sure, yeah. So. Um, I do a ton of photo reference for the books I do. Um, when I go to an airport, uh, even if it's an airport I've been to a lot, like San you know, SFO, I've been to a lot, uh, I try and find new things there and, and sort of imagine, you know, chase scenes or action scenes or what could, what could happen. And so, um, you know, I found myself taking a lot of pictures inside airports um, and, one of the cool things I think about airports is how much they have broadened them you know, from being sort of just like a, a basically a, a glorified bus terminal when I was a kid. to now, you know, there's all kinds of gourmet meals and fancy stores. And, and a lot of times there's really cool artwork um, either on display in the terminals or sometimes they've got museums or, or art exhibitions, uh, you know, in the passageways in between the terminals and things like that. So I found myself wandering by these and, and taking pictures to sort of remember them for the books and, and add them as detail to the books. And then um, you know, Instagram, I've got a 16 year old and she's on Instagram all the time. And, and so I, I follow her and, and you know, I, as I sort of explored Instagram and what it was all about, um, I realized I was sitting on you know, a, a bunch of real beautiful pictures uh, of airport art, if you will, um, that, that people might miss as they're sort of rushing by or you know, they've got a really short connection or something like that. So um, to, to sort of tie in with the Walker books, yeah, every day I post uh, a piece of airport art from uh, one of the various airports I've visited. Um, and, and I sort of say where it is. And if I know who did it, um, I, I try and credit the artist. Uh, but yeah, o over the course of doing that five days a week, yeah, there's a, there's a big collection on there now. And, um, I tag the airport so the airport can ring in and, and sort of say what's going on or if there's a big exhibition or something like that. So it, it's been a fun little sidelight that, that ties into the books and, and, uh, I think relates to, to the whole aviation theme while still being sort of, um, you know, within the within the framework of Instagram, which is all about you know the visual and and cool images. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Have you ever been to the airport in Missoula, Montana? I have not. That is that one has escaped me. <laughs> well, I don't know why you would have been there, but um, it, rather than a lot of artwork, there's a lot of taxidermy. <laughs> that's 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 where I fly into <laughs> when when I go home to visit okay. my family. I I grew up a little ways from Missoula and it just it it always makes me laugh because I know I'm home <laughs> when there's <laughs> dead animals on the wall <laughs> well it, it's really it's gotten that the whole Instagram thing has really taken on a life of its own because now 
you know, enough of enough of my readers or my friends or family follow the account and they will send me, you know, photos from airports that they visited. Um, you know, they're looking around more. I think, I think they're more aware of, of what's around them having followed the account. And so they'll send me pictures and, and I'll post those if I can. And so, yeah, the next time you're in Missoula, if you want to, if you want to snap a couple of pictures, I'd, I'd love to post them up and give you credit for them. That's fun. Okay, so airports, but let's get back to Seth. Um, <laughs> what what has changed with Seth throughout the series? How is he sort of um, growing and evolving as a character? Yeah, so I, I think from the first book to the third book, um, he has gotten uh, a little more cynical, uh, you know, I, especially in his uh, engagements with other members of law enforcement um, through book one and book two, he, he hasn't always uh, people haven't always leveled with him, and so I think he's a little more you know worldly or uh, cynical about uh, about interacting with other people. Um, most of his cases have sort of pushed him to uh, toward facing a big uh, event in his past. And um, if you've been reading the series, um, you know, I've gotten lots of questions from readers about, you know, are we ever going to know the full story of, of what happened to him and, and stuff? And, and Departure honestly tells uh, an awful lot of that. Uh, and I had that in mind. You were asking what the inspiration for the story was. If there's, if there's a second inspiration beyond just the plot, uh, on the character side, it was really always that I knew um, this book was going to be the one where uh, Seth has to really sort of confront uh, the demons in his past and, and what drove him to lead his uh, to leave his former life, become an air marshal, and, and then you know that that led him to this point. So, so departure actually has a dual storyline. There's there's a second mystery that's set in the past uh, that ties in with the search for this um, missing VIP. And so we get little flashbacks here and there through the book, and we see a younger Seth, uh, Seth in his former life, um, and hopefully the two stories tie together by the end so that you have a much better idea of who he is, what he's been through, and, and how he got here. Yeah, he's, um, you know, he's he's human, so he's he's obviously got a past, but he's been kind of... Well, the books have been a little, kind of kind of vague about. It. I mean, alluding to it, but he's clearly not quite been ready to face it in a lot of ways, um, especially with right. his with his the mother of like his god kids and those sorts of things. Um, so, yeah, it's good that he, it's good that he. Uh, I'm being his his therapist now. It's good that he's trying to face it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you you were talking about uh, us writers torturing our characters, Seth. Seth definitely um, goes through the ringer in this book, both both physically and in, in terms of the action scenes, but also emotionally. Because there's there's an awful lot of you know his past that gets dredged up here that he's got to deal with, and um, yeah, I, I think by the end of the book, his personal life is is really impacted by all of those changes, and so that'll that'll certainly impact him going forward. We're going to go ahead and take our second break of the podcast, but you definitely want to stick around because I get a completely unexpected or unusual, maybe, answer to my, my usual what kinds of research did you do for this book question. It's pretty entertaining, so stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review 
podcast and my interview with author Joseph Reed. Let's go ahead and return now to that interview. What kinds of research did you do for this particular book? Yeah, a lot. This one was a tricky one. Um, so because of the nature of of the story, you know, being inside this airport and, and having the airport almost be a character in the story, um, I, I felt like I needed to spend a lot more time at SFO and really, you know, find all the little nooks and crannies that I could make part of the book and, and really take advantage of in the story. Uh, and, and SFO is a weird airport because unlike some airports, you can't access everything um, behind security once you clear it. So, so there's essentially two halves to the airport. Um, so, so one set of security gates will get you to one half of the terminals and the other set of security gates will get you to the other half. So I spent probably two solid days inside SFO where I would do things like I would fly up on the first flight in the morning on one airline, um, land and do the interiors of one half of the airport behind security. Then I'd kind of come out and do some work um, in the in the pre-security um, you know public area, and then I would check in for a different airline and go into the other half of the airport and do the other side of uh, of the airport before flying home at night, uh, because there was really a lot of uh, sort of timing things out figuring out how you could get from one place to another, uh, you know, what kind of shortcuts there were, um, you know, things like that that he would need to take advantage of if he's racing around. So, um, so there was a lot of research like that. And then, you know, my, my books tend to, in, in addition to travel, they always kind of have a little bit of a technical bent because Seth's a former electrical engineer and an inventor, and he kind of tinkers and MacGyvers his way through things. And so there was some some other research that I had to do about the technical problems in this book, um, especially in his backstory when we're, when we're dealing with young Seth in his former career. I sort of needed to be able to set the scene of, you know, what was the what was the the peak technology of that time, um, what would he have been working on, and uh, you know how how would that factor into uh, the mystery in its past. So, so that there was a decent bit of research to do for this one. Uh, two comments came to mind as you were talking. One is that if someone didn't know you were writing this particular book, um, stalking the SFO airport would sound a little sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a story about that, but yeah. <laughs> okay. And then my second comment is uh, MacGyvering. You're, you're referring to the to the old school MacGyver and not the rebooted MacGyver, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I have to be honest. I, I'm of a certain age now, and so I have not watched the rebooted MacGyver. I have not watched have the rebooted either. Magnum PI. I'm I'm old school, um, but it's just the originals on on things like that. Um, I'm with I'm with you. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Um, so so SFO. Yeah, I. Um, you know, one of the things that one of the challenges when you when you're sort of figuring out where to set these books is uh, you don't always have access to all the spaces that you'd like to have access to. And so some of it is, is sort of um, you know, deducing where things are and, and how things are done and, and doing your research. So, so yeah, I, I was photographing, you know, a lot in the airport and, and you know, maybe even some, maybe even some doors I probably, you know, shouldn't take it, shouldn't have taken pictures of. Um, I was taking one particular picture and an alarm went off behind me um, and I, I just hung my head and I assumed, okay, um, this is it. I'm probably going to jail because they think I'm some kind of terrorist, you know, scoping out the airport. Um, but when it turned out, it was, it was something else. It was somebody who had come out of security and tried to go back through or something. But, but in that moment, uh, you know, my heart sort of froze and I, I, figured the, I figured the jig was up. Yeah, that would be, I think I probably would have had a slight heart attack. Um, <laughs> so what about writing thrillers do you think uh, appeals to you more than other genres? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, the 
there's the whole thriller and mystery, you know, what's a thriller, what's a mystery dichotomy um, that people, you know, sort of debate. Uh, I like thrillers because I like the pace of them. Uh, I like the ticking clock. And in a lot of ways, you know, in a mystery, because you don't, you almost necessarily don't know who the antagonist is, uh, there's less of a personal battle between the protagonist and the antagonist. Um, I like in thrillers a lot of times where you know who the bad guy is. Uh, you know more about why the bad guy is doing what they're doing. And so it, it elevates the stakes, for me at least, uh, of the protagonist and the antagonist's um, fight uh, to see who will win and why. And um, so, so I, find that, I find that very interesting. Um, and, and I like the, I like the fast pacing. It's, it's one of those challenges to try and make the books faster and, and always keep readers on their toes. Um, but, but that's one of the, the things that makes it fun too. Thank you. In terms of this series, do you have an arc in mind, a number of books in mind, or are you just kind of taking the story where it leads you? Um, I mean, a little bit of both. Uh, when I first came up with the series, I, I sort of envisioned uh, you know, an overall arc for Walker. And uh, you know, there, there were sort of key milestones along that route, uh, but plenty of room, plenty of space in between for, you know, for adventures in between. And so, you know, we're, we're nowhere near um, you know, done with, with the ideas I had for him. Um, obviously, it all depends on the, on the publishers and the readers. I mean, we, we hope the, the demand is there for more set stories, but but if people want to read more Seth stories, I, I've got plenty I can tell. So, uh, yeah, would love to keep writing them and, and keep the series going. Okay. Are you working on number four now? Um, I am not working on Seth number four, um, although uh, I have several sort of Seth plots laid down and, and uh, in, in semi-states of being done. Uh, and then I'm also working on another sort of completely unrelated project that would be something completely new. Um, so I've got I've got a bunch of different irons in the fire right now, which is which is sort of terrifying and and exciting all at the same time. Um, so you know we'll we'll see where they take it. Yeah, that that is that does sound fun. It makes me wonder. Um, with someone such as yourself who has a, a full-time day job as well as writing and you know it sounds like before um, COVID you traveled quite a lot so how do you balance that day job and writing where do you find time and space to write uh, in your in your daily life yeah it's tricky um, the the travel and stuff actually helped um, before COVID my, my routine has changed a little bit now so so before COVID I wrote a lot um, early, early mornings, I would get up at about four and write until about seven or eight when I tend to take one of my kids to school and then get cleaned up and, and, and go for my, for my day job. Um, except when I was on the road and when I'm on the road, uh, you know, I'm kind of free to, you know, fill in, uh, you know, stay up late, get up early, um, fill in all those extra hours with writing. Um, now, since COVID happened, I've been grounded. I've, my last flight was in March of 2020. Um, so I've been stuck at home. That's been a little more challenging and, and finding the space between, um, you know, all the things that, you know, all the, all the listeners are, are dealing with too, you know, Zoom school for my kids and uh, more interruptions and the whole family being on top of each other and, and things like that. It's made it, it's made it trickier. Um, and so I'm, um, and that, that may be contributing to me working on multiple different things is that I, I don't always have the concentrated time that I used to uh, to sort of bang something out. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a challenge that the balancing is always a struggle. And, and it's one of those things you, you try and find some clear time when you can really sort of tune the world out and, and just really focus on, on the writing and the plot. So, so has your, um, your writing style or your writing process change? I mean, I, I, you know, it's changed because of circumstances with, with COVID, et cetera, but has yep. it changed 
throughout this series as you've as, as you've gotten more maybe more comfortable with writing or you know deeper into the stories has that process changed for you I think so um you know I'm pretty I think I know Seth much better now. So, so these books are all first-person books, uh, and, and I think I know his voice better, and I can slip into you know writing a Seth book faster. Um, my process in terms of coming up with the stories has has streamlined a little bit. Uh, you know, for, for the first one, you, when you're first trying to get published, you've got to write the whole book and and you know sort of pitch it on on spec almost, and so. Uh, the, you know, take off an awful lot of work went into take off on the front end before any publisher had ever seen it. Uh, on the back end, you know, with False Horizon and and now Departure and and the other things I'm working on, um, I've sort of come around where I can write a pitch um, to the publishers and and stuff like that. So it's it's a more condensed kind of uh, outline to the story uh, than something I might have you know, done before I got published. Um, you know, two to four pages, I usually try and keep it. Uh, and, and that sort of serves as like the guideposts for what the story is going to be. And then I try and stick to that as I'm, as I'm writing. And if I get stuck, I go back to it uh, to try and have it keep me honest about, you know, what the, what the story is really supposed to be about and, you know, why I was interested in it in the first place. Let's go ahead and take our last break of the podcast. When we come back, Joseph will be talking about what he has been reading. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. SMC Book Review Podcast. I have to admit to you that I have been listening to or watching too much TikTok lately because there is a sound on TikTok where somebody says, what's this person reading right now? And then they show what they have been reading. And um, we're about to talk about what Joseph has been reading. But don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to replace my what have you been reading question or what do you like to read with that little jingle. Just in my own head. Or you can sing it in your head when we get to that part of the podcast. But let's go ahead and find out what Joseph's been reading. <laughs> when, you, when you take the time to read, what, what have you been reading? Um, yeah, the, the last great book I read um, was, was uh, a friend's book, uh, J. Todd Scott. Um, so he wrote uh, a great series of westerns set down on the Texas border. Um, he's actually a, a lifetime uh, DEA agent, and he just wrote a new book um, called Lost River, which is um, you know, really, really fantastic. Uh, he helped um, do my launch event for Departure, uh, and his book came out right around the same time, maybe a week or two before me. So um, that was a fantastic one, and, and it's been gathering lots of rave reviews, so I'm, I'm glad to see he's getting the attention he deserves for that one. Yeah, nice. Um, how old are your children, and what do they like to read if they're readers? Yeah, so they are 11 and 16. Um, the 16-year-old uh, is mostly mired in reading for school. Um, so she just finished uh, Kafka's The Metamorphosis, I think, the other night. Um, but when she gets more time on her hands, I think she, she enjoys sort of dystopian uh, YA fiction. And then my 11-year-old, um, when she's not in school and is reading for pleasure, uh, she likes actually kind of cozy mysteries. Um, she has found that she really likes, um, for whatever reason, she likes English manners uh, like Agatha Christie or uh, Conan Doyle would write. 
And so um, she, she, I just handed her a, a big thick book of um, Sherlock Holmes stories. So when I, when she has a moment, I think she's going to try dipping into that. I love that. One of my nieces, and now I can't remember which one. That's terrible. Uh, went went through that that same similar phase with with um, Sherlock Holmes, and so for one of her birthdays, she got I think she got the collected work, and she was very excited. Oh, cool. But, yeah, that's fun. I know that um, you know you have a website, you have social media, so if you can uh, tell people what your website is and where they can find you on social media. Of course, happy to. So. Um, my website is josephreadbooks.com, uh, read, R-E-I-D. And then on all the social media platforms, generally, I'm Joseph Reed Books. So I'm Joseph Reed Books on Instagram. I'm Joseph Reed Books on Twitter. Uh, for Facebook, I'm Joseph Reed Books 1, uh, because Facebook made me add a 1 to it. Um, but basically, that's that I try and keep the handle consistent so everybody can find me. I'm actually a little bit jealous that your last name is Reed. Um, <laughs> you can be an author and your last name is Reed, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's spelled wrong though, and I've always I've I know always got, I've always gotten guff about that as long as I as long as I've been alive. So, um, so is there anything that we haven't talked about um, during our conversation that you wanted to mention about um, the Seth Walker series or writing in general? Anything that we haven't covered? Oh, I just, you know, I would say thank you. I mean, to you and, and to the, the podcast community, um, you know, and, and all the books, the grammars and, and people who cover you know, the books that we write, um, you know, books like movies are, are really driven by word of mouth. And I think we've been seeing that even more in COVID times as, as people are hungry for content and are, are eager to, to find the next great thing because they're, they're looking for an escape. And so, um, you know, for you and all the people who cover us and, and you know, help people find our books, I, I think we would all just say thank you because um, without, without you all and without the readers, you know, we don't get to do this. And, and it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great pastime. It's a, it's a great hobby. It's a great profession. So thank you. Well, thank you. And, and thank you so much for um, taking the time to join me and to talk about departure. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll come on anytime, hopefully for for Seth 4 or maybe something different. Yeah, I would love that. Thank you once again to Joseph Reed for joining me, and I do hope that he will come back for Seth Walker number 4 or something else that he is working on because I do always enjoy speaking with him. We talked about his Instagram account earlier in the in the interview, and it's very if, – if you have any kind of fascination with airports – even if you don't, he takes some really cool pictures. So you should follow him on Instagram because, yeah, there's there's things that you don't always pay attention to in airports as you're racing from one place to the other. If you have a long layover, maybe you take the time to take a walk or look at some of the artwork that's on the um, on the walls. I always like when they put local artwork as you're as you're walking. You know, when they have the moving walkways, and you can either stand on the moving walkway and look at it, or you will even walk on the moving walkway and look at it. But there's some very interesting things to look at in airports, not just the people. Although I do love looking at people in airports, but I hope that I never have to look at people in airports like Seth does and try to solve it. And you know, solve try to do an investigation. I don't know why I am doing an investigation anywhere, let alone an airport, but hopefully I never have to do that. So thank you again to Joseph. Thank you as always to you. I so appreciate my listeners. And um, if you're a fan of this podcast, you should definitely follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let me know what you think about the books that we discuss. If you've read any of them, I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you're reading. I won't sing the jingle, I promise. And just, you know, keep in touch and let me know how things are going. I love hearing from listeners. Also, take the time to go follow Joseph on social media as well. Check out his website and definitely check out Departure if you are are a fan of either the series or of mysteries or if you're intrigued by an investigation set in such a, an enclosed space as an airport i hope that you will um, join me again for the next podcast when i will be speaking to ken dortzbach about his novel finding hemingway if you have ever thought 
huh, I wonder what Ernest Hemingway would be like as a life coach. First off, your brain is an interesting place. Second off, if you have ever, ever, ever thought of that, then you should definitely tune in for the next interview because finding Hemingway, you can kind of find out the answer to that question. So join me for that interview on the next episode. As always, thank you for joining me. I hope that you're having a wonderful day, and I always hope that your days involve plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program